tell you what, there is nothing better than your own homemade brew that you can taste when it's a hot day and you have to do some lawn mowing. Hey guys, welcome to today's DIY with MI. We're gonna be checking out how to make our very own beer. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay guys, so today's uh, video, as the intro said, is we're gonna be looking at how to make your very own beer. Now, making it, I've been doing this for quite a few years now, so I have a lot of equipment because I really got into it and really enjoyed it and started doing all the different uh, ways of making it. It's funny, you can make this as easy as you want or as complicated as you want. It basically depends on you. It's how much time do you want to invest into this. So that's basically what it is. Today I'm going to be showing how to make something very, very, very simple. Uh, it's just as easy as heating up a little bit of water and uh, just mixing some ingredients together. If you can make macaroni and cheese, you can make your own uh, beer. So what I'm going to say is equipment that you're going to need. You need some sort of a fermenter. Now I've got two of these up here. You can get these at your local brew shop or you can check out, I'll put some links down in the description of a couple of places online that you can buy this stuff from. I highly recommend if it's your first time ever doing this to basically get one of the small kits. Now there is the Mr. Beer out there, but it's all plasticky and stuff. I would check out one of the small uh, one gallon batch kits that comes from like Northern Brewer or from Midwest Supplies, again, links down in the description, that can get you going. That's what I started with. And it's a glass Demijohn bottle is what they're called, you know, those glass jugs, and um, has all the siphons and all the tubing, plus a beer kit and everything. And I think it's around 50 bucks or so. It's not crazy expensive. So if you wanna try this out and give it a shot, I recommend one of those. The Mr. Beer is okay, but it's not uh, ideal in a sense but hey if that's all you have access to it'll work too and this method that I'm showing you is for a large batch but it will do it's the exact same method for the smaller batch it's just you have less ingredients because it's a one gallon batch but anyway you pick yourself up a fermenter this one is one of my old ones has some graduated levels on the side I like having one of these sticky thermometers on the side it kind of helps because if you're first getting started you may find places in your house that need to be uh, that may be warmer or cooler than others you want them to be fairly cool so an area of your house that somewhere stays in the 65 to 68 degrees area so a basement or something like that would be perfect to uh, let the beer ferment in because that is one thing that you have to take care of is the yeast. That's what's going to be doing all your heavy lifting. But we'll get into that a little bit later. So pick yourself up a fermenter. I will not be using this one today. Instead, I'm going to be using one of these uh, big mouth bubblers. These are fairly inexpensive. They're lightweight because they're plastic. I bought one of these little, little strap deals because it just helps you in carrying it around because once this thing is full with about uh, five gallons worth of beer, it gets heavy. So you want to get yourself a fermenter, okay? So that's the first step. The next step is sanitizing. You got to sanitize, okay? So what I like to use is a liquid sanitizer called Star Sanitizer. You can pick this up. Uh, one bottle will last you a long time. I've been brewing for about six years now, and I'm not heavy brewer. I don't brew like every single week religiously, but I brew at least once or twice a month probably. And you can see, I, I, I don't know if you can see that. I haven't used all of this yet, and I bought this when I first got started. So this a little bit of this goes a long, long, long ways, and I'll even show you how to mix this up. So get yourself some sanitizer. They even make granular uh, sanitizer like LD Carlson. You can use that. That'll be fine. Next thing you want is a bung, you know, of whatever type. Now, if you're using a fermenter like this, it usually just has a lid that has a hole drilled in it that's the exact same size as this little device, which I'll explain what it is here in just a second. But if not, if you have one of these big mouth bubblers like this, it has the hole in the top. That's what these little bungs, these little rubber uh, you know, stoppers with the hole in them are for. And this is basically an airlock. And we'll see how to use this here for too long. This one is a three piece airlock. It's got a cap, it's got the inner piece and the outer piece, okay? And this will keep uh, air from going back in to your beer and contaminating it, okay? So you definitely want that. And then the main thing you want is a good beer kit. This is the one that we're gonna be using. I'll get a little closer to the camera, show you what it looks like. This is the Cooper's uh, Mexican Cerveza is what we're gonna do. So it's gonna be kind of like a Corona clone. Now, 
just so you don't get your hopes up too high. It is not an exact clone, okay? Uh, it's, it's supposed to be like it, but the problem is, is uh, the Coronas of the world and the Modelos and those, those types of uh, Mexican beers, those are all lager beers. Now, lager is a different type of yeast that needs a very low temperature to ferment, and most of the time you can't achieve that unless you live in the mountains where you can stick it up in the mountains somewhere, or if you live uh, in an area that, that gets to like 45 to 50 degrees at night. Well, that's a little low. It's, really, it's about 50 to 55 degrees roughly as a lager yeast, okay? So this one is gonna be using ale yeast, so it will be a little bit different. It won't be an exact clone of Corona, but I believe it gets really close, and this one is a good one. Um, I highly recommend this one. Everything you need is in this kit, and I will put the camera down closer to get you started, but this is all you need is just a beer kit. They make many different kinds. I got this one off of Amazon. So just look up Cooper's Beer Kits and that, and you'll, you'll find these canned uh, beer kits, all right? So let's get back over here. The next thing that you'll need is you will need some corn sugar or dextrose is what it's called. Corn sugar uh, helps up the gravity of the beer. This only has so much sugar in it and sugar is what produces the alcohol. It also produces the, uh, the uh, um, uh, the gas, CO2, there we go, my brain's working. The CO2 and everything that goes on to help prime everything and whatnot. But you, this only comes, uh, this will probably be about two and a half percent ABV. You want to add more sugar to it. And it even tells you there's instructions on the back it tells you what to add to up the ABV up to the uh, 6%, five or six percent, or whatever you want to, you know, up it to based on adding more sugar to it. Now you can't add too much sugar. So if you add way too much sugar, then your yeast can actually die because it will actually become too alcoholic and it'll actually kill the yeast. So you do want to keep it in balance. Follow the instructions. Like I said, if you can, if you can make macaroni and cheese, you can make this. All right. There's a couple other things that I'm going to be doing just because I know uh, how to up the flavor of it and make it a little bit better than just straight out of the kit. But let me tell you, it's pretty decent. Just if you follow the directions on the kit, it's fantastic. It comes out really good. It's much better than Milwaukee's Best or Keystone or something like that. It's way better than your bottom of the shelf beers, okay? So let me get the camera closer down here to what we're doing and we'll start taking it apart and we'll start brewing some beer. Thanks for joining me. Okay guys, so now that we're down here on the countertop, we've got our dextrose. Uh, I also brought some dry malt extract. So this is what's called dry malt extract. It's basically this, but in a powder form basically. So this is basically liquid malt extract that already has the hops and everything uh, brewed in it and everything, it's already ready to go. Um, whereas this is just like grain extract is all this is. I'm gonna be using this, this is one of the things I'm gonna use to kind Kind of up the flavor of it a little bit that uh, it doesn't normally tell you to do okay so first things first we need to mix up our star sand so what we do is this is one of those squeeze bottles I love this it says it should be about six ooh, in fact I've actually squeezed it already should be about six uh, uh, what it is milliliters um, you can see that it's a little bit above the five milliliter that's usually where I squeeze it to is right about the five milliliter I just grab a milk jug and just fill it up with water because it's basically six milliliters of the liquid star sand to one gallon of uh, water so all we do is I just dump that in there just let that kind of go in Another thing I like to do, I like to keep a squirt bottle because it's nice to spray off your tools and whatnot. There we go, we got our sanitizer mixed up. So now we're gonna check out the Cooper. This yeast does okay, but there is a better tasting yeast. And that yeast is this right here, which is the good old Safe Ale uh, SO4 yeast. See if that'll, hopefully I'll focus on that but SO4 yeast. This one is a great dry yeast. It ferments completely dry where there's no flavors that it adds to it. Okay, a couple of things I wanna mention right before we get started is I recommend getting a brew book, a brew notebook. Just get one of these simple little notebooks and write down different notes of things that you're doing, things that you're changing, like I'm gonna be changing to the USO4 yeast versus the DIY beer Cooper's brewing yeast, things like that. Write that down because if you do get into it and you wanna try different things, you at least have a record of what did and did not work. Got a pot over here that's uh, heating up some water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this can, that's the reason I took the, the, the 
wrapper off of it. I'm gonna put this can in that hot water and we're just gonna let that heat up. Okay, so first off, you gotta have something to drink while you're doing this. It's just, it's just a rule. I don't make the rules, this is what you do. So, beer moment, as Big Clive would say. All right, so now, get yourself a scale and a sanitized uh, pail or, or something to measure with. So now, I'm gonna do a little bit different than what the recipe calls for. I'm gonna do a tried and true method from Craig Tube, and those of you who don't know who that is, go Google that and check him out. He has some of the greatest beer brewing videos, and he has a method that he likes to call the five and seven. It's basically 500 grams of malt extract, dry malt extract, or DME, and 700 grams of dextrose. Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do to sanitize this, I'm gonna take this off, I'm gonna put all this into like this, and our airlock, and our bung, all this stuff. I'm gonna put that into another bowl up here on the counter to sanitize. Okay guys, so I've got the can over here. It is piping hot, so I'm gonna just kinda tip it up. And I'm gonna grab a hold of it with a hot glove here. Woo, that's nice and hot. So now, next thing we need to do is we need to sanitize these. So I'm gonna grab some of my sanitizer and just kinda hose this down. And we'll just wait a little bit for that to that to do its thing. Okay, and so this is now good and sanitary. So what we're gonna do, and I recommend using a hand one because what we're gonna do is we're going to open this up. Oh, let me get down here and frame here. We're gonna open this up, uh, <clears throat> but we're not gonna cut it completely loose. Okay guys, so the next thing I like to do is I like to clean out some of that sticky stuff because there's a lot of that that's still left in there. So I take some really hot water, pretty much boiling, and I just dump it in there. Okay, so after getting that in there, the next thing, I'm gonna put all the sugar and stuff in there. So I've sanitized this funnel. If you don't have a funnel, you don't have to worry about it. You just pour it in the best you can. But I'm gonna pour all of this sugar and stuff in there. Okay, so now all there is to do is to just fill it up. So you just grab some tap water and we just uh, fill it up. And this is pretty much it. We just uh, dump this in here. We'll fill it up and we'll give it a good stir here for too long. We'll also have to check the temperature of it, make sure that it's not too hot, but usually you put in all that hot stuff and then when you fill it up with the water and to top it off, it usually makes it a nice, uh, good temperature. So we're just gonna fill this up now. Okay, now I've gone ahead and sanitized a very big spoon. Uh, whatever type of stirring device you wanna use, make sure you sanitize it. And at this point, make sure anything that goes inside here is sanitized you know that's the only thing that can ruin the beer now that's the only thing really that can ruin the beer the entire way through is the sanitization you do not want to have unsanitized stuff touching the beer Okay guys, so now that we've got everything in there, got it stirred up and everything, I'm gonna add the yeast. But before I do, I'm gonna do, uh, this is now, this is me, this is where I deviate. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to to make things uh, taste even better. I've got some yeast Energizer by LD Carlson. It's about a half a teaspoon, I believe, uh, half a teaspoon per US gallon. So I've got five gallons in there, so we're talking uh, let's see, two, three, no, no, two, two and a half teaspoons or so. I just guess because I don't want to have to sanitize a spoon. So we'll just dump, I don't know, I'll look at it. Quite a bit of yeast nutrient in there. And this gives the yeast something to uh, eat. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake my yeast down to the bottom. I'm gonna spray the bag with sanitizer because I wanna make sure that it's sanitized. I also wanna take my scissors and I wanna sanitize them as well. I don't know if this is necessary, but it just makes me feel better about uh, sanitizing it right before I have to put it in. So we're gonna give this a few seconds to get sanitary and then uh, we'll pour it in. <laughs> I don't know about you, but me, I like to stir my yeast. So 
So that's pretty much all you gotta do. So now all we gotta do is seal it up with the airlock. Ideal, we're gonna fill it up. There's a line that's on there and I'm gonna fill it up to that line. I'll show you a close up here in a second. But I'm gonna go ahead and fill that up and then put a cap on it. And what that allows is it allows the gas inside here to bubble out through the water, but then the water keeps the air from out here from going inside there and contaminating, okay? All right, guys, so that's pretty much how you make your beer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up and everything, and then we're gonna let this sit for about a week, and then we're, we're gonna check it in a week, okay? So stay tuned. Okay guys, well it's been about two weeks now. Now you'll notice that the carboy is a little bit different if you can see it. Uh, what I ended up doing is you have to take a siphon Okay, which you can get one of these, usually comes with a kit, if you get a kit or whatever, but you take a siphon and I like to do this, you really don't have to, if you want to, you can just leave it in the same fermenter and let it just go for two weeks. I, w I like to get mine as clear as possible, so you do what's called secondary fermentation. You take a different carboy or a different fermenter and you siphon and this is called an auto siphon. You basically stick it in the liquid and you pull up and down on it kind of like a syringe and it'll pump the liquid through it to get it started so you don't have to suck on it because you don't suck on the end of a siphon because your mouth has bacteria in it, you will infect it, okay? So you wanna use the auto siphon, okay? But you just sanitize this whole thing up and then you transfer it you transfer the, the wort from here to another uh, fermenter, which is what I did. And what that does is it gets it off all of the sediment and stuff that falls out of it as it's uh, brewing. And then that way you get a much clearer beer. But like I said, you don't really have to. But today is gonna be bottling day and I will show you a couple different methods. I won't probably go all the way through the bottling method because uh, I don't bottle anymore. I do what's called kegging. You get these little, uh, basically pop kegs, You've seen that, but you basically get these little pop kegs and uh, you basically just have to transfer it just like you transfer it into secondary. You transfer it from here using the auto siphon into there and that's it, you're done. Most everyone does not have the keg set up uh, when you're first getting started. So I'll show you how to do it with regular old bottles. And I will recommend whenever you get bottles, you can just reuse bottles. You know, if you're, if you're drinking like this one's a, a Sam Adams bottle, um, you can reuse these. It's just, you have to make sure it's not a twist off. See, this one is just a normal, of course, let me get some light here. This is just a normal, uh, normal bottle top where you actually have to pry off, okay? So no twist offs. Twist offs, I've seen some people get them to work, but they don't work very well. You can't really get it crimped around that twist off thing very well. You need the big mechanical machine that puts the cap on. So uh, doing it by hand, uh, your best bet is to get, uh, I know all Sam Adams are pry offs. They're not twist offs. So basically Bud Light bottles and Coors Light bottles and those, they're all twist offs. So those won't work. So you need to get some bottles that are the pry off top, okay? So this usually makes, with five gallons, you usually make about three cases. So there's approximately about Oh, 50 some, 50 some bottles what you're gonna need. And most bottles are 12 ounce, so you're gonna need about 50 some 12 ounce bottles. So about three cases worth. So yeah, it makes a lot. So any case, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, uh, get a little closer to show you how to uh, hook this all up. You're gonna need, you can do it a couple of different ways you can uh, do what's called batch priming or you can do bottle priming. Basically what that means is you're gonna put a little bit of sugar back into this so it'll start fermenting again. But the idea is, is when it starts fermenting, the two byproducts is alcohol and CO2. So we're gonna use the natural ferment fermenting CO2 that comes out of the yeast doing its thing, eating the sugar, to actually carbonate the uh, bottle, okay? So you can do it, like I said, one of two ways. Doing bottle priming is where we'll put sugar directly into the bottle, just a little bit of sugar directly in the bottle, and you can do that one of two ways. You can do it with dextrose. I don't recommend using regular table sugar because table sugar does have a certain flavor to it because it comes from cane, you know, it's cane sugar, so it will add a flavor to your beer that you may not want. So you wanna use dextrose, which is corn sugar, or you can get, which is kinda cool, you can get these fermenters favorites. You can get this from uh, uh, Northern Brewer, Midwest Brewer, supplies, DIY, brewing, all these different places, but they're basically a little 
fizz drop. If you look at it, it's basically, it looks like a little candy. And what it is, is it's dextrose, and you drop one of these per bottle. So you just dump one in there. Now you gotta be careful not to over prime because you'll get what's called bottle bombs because it's pressurizing in there. And when you cork up the top, um, it's gonna force all that carbonation into the liquid. But the problem is if your yeast is really going crazy because you put a lot of sugar in there, these can break and they can blow up because beer bottles are not as thick as Coke bottles. They're fairly thin and it will actually shatter them. So when we get more into it, I'll tell you the, the measurements for it, all right? The next method is batch priming. So batch priming is where you have basically a bottling bucket. This is a bucket that has a hole in it, okay? And we're gonna use, reach over here and get it, a little spigot, okay? So we're gonna attach this spigot to the bucket, okay, like so. And then what we'll do is we will transfer the brewed beer from here into this bottling bucket, okay? And what we'll do is we'll measure out some dextrose, quite a bit of dextrose, and what you do is you will boil that because you wanna make sure the sugar is, is, is not gonna contaminate, and then you'll pitch that in here along with the beer and basically mix it up. Then once you do that, then you just fill all the bottles off of this bucket and you don't have to worry about measuring out and getting it in each bottle and all that stuff. So batch priming is a little bit easier a lot of times kits will come with a little bit little sack of corn sugar that will say priming sugar and that's literally what it's for you're supposed to put it in here you're supposed to transfer it into some sort of a bottling system and then you transfer it into the bottle so let's go ahead and get a little bit closer so we can see how all of this works all right you're gonna need a racking cane, okay? So this is a racking cane, all right? So the bottom of this little thing has a little valve on it, okay? So liquid can come down through here, but it stops when this little valve is out, okay? And it can't come out until you take it and press it down on something. So the idea is, when you have your bottle, you're gonna push this down into the bottle and then when it hits the bottom, I don't know if you can see that, when it hits the bottom, it will start letting the liquid flow through and it will start filling up. Once it fills up to about the top of the bottle, you then just simply pull it out and they've designed these little racking canes to where when you pull it out, it puts the perfect amount of head space in the top, basically sucks a little bit of air in and then you've got a little bit of air in the top of it, okay? So it's got the perfect amount of headspace in it. So that's basically what you gotta do. So what I've done with my racking cane is I've put a little piece of tubing on here and then what it does is it will hook right on to my bottling bucket, just like so. And so then I can hang it off the counter um, and it will, you know, if I had a counter, it'll hang off the counter and then all I gotta do is just slide the bottles up it. So basically I take a bottle and I slide it right up it, put it down in here, trying to do this and film it at the same time, it's hard. Put it up in there and then once it reaches the top, take it off. So that's what I do, uh, or at least I used to do uh, for the bottling cane. Now, if you do not have a bottling bucket, you can do it off of your siphon. Now, you gotta make sure and get the right size siphon, but basically, you're just gonna shove the racking cane up in there, and then you'll be able to, you know, move that around wherever you need to put the racking cane, and you can actually bottle it directly off of this, because since it's got that valve, it'll stop the liquid, liquid from flowing. So what I usually do is take a bottle, put it inside of it and then get the siphon going until it starts to flow through and then take it out and then you're good. And then you can literally just take an entire entire thing of bottles and you just go one, fill it up, next, fill it up, next, fill it up until you fill them all up. To do bottle priming, okay? So what you do is it's about a half a teaspoon per every bottle, at least that's the way I do it. Um, you can look all this stuff up on the internet. I, I totally, uh, suggest going and just Googling around and looking at what people do. Depending on the style, um, you may need more or less carbonation, but I think a half teaspoon is a good starting spot. Take and dump a half teaspoon in every single bottle. So I've got my little mixed up jug of sanitizer here. Now, another thing that you can do, you can take these and just pour it into the bottle, swish it all around, make sure the whole inside of the bottle gets coated, and then dump it back in. Another quick way, 
And like I said, this is if you decide that you really wanna start doing this. Um, you can get one of these. It's a little bottle sanitizer dealy. You put it together and this snaps into the bottom. You fill this up with sanitizer and then what you do is you turn the bottle upside down, put it on top of it and when you push it, it will suck the sanitizer up and spray it inside the bottle. So that's what you're gonna do. You're either gonna use one of these fizz drops, drop one, one per bottle, you just drop one fizz drop per bottle or do a half teaspoon of dextrose per each bottle, okay? Now, once the uh, the bottles have been filled, we're gonna pretend this is filled and everything, we're gonna move on to capping. Now, you can get these caps, you know, at your local brew store, you know, wherever you, you, you know, you get your beer kit or whatever. Most kits will uh, come with these. If it's a big full-blown kit, um, they'll come with these. If you do the one that I did here, um, it doesn't come with them, so you just gotta get them. They're fairly inexpensive. You need to sanitize all of these. So uh, just pour a little bowl of sanitizer and just throw them in it. Um, if I'm using this thing, since you have to fill it up, I just throw them in it and then you just reach in and pull them out so that way they're nice and sanitized. And then we're gonna use this capper. And basically what you do is you're gonna put this on the top and then the capper on the bottom, it's got basically a magnet that's here and then it's gonna, it's gonna grab and pinch it down, okay? So set this on top. And then we just push down very firmly till you feel it snap in. And then that's it. It's now bottled. And that's all you gotta do. And once that's done, then you're sealed up and ready for it to carbonate. So then do not put them in the fridge because the fridge will actually, uh, at least at this point, uh, when you freshly bottle them, the fridge will actually stop the yeast from fermenting and uh, carbonating this. So you wanna just put it in the same place that you were brewing. So put it in you know, a cool, dry place, um, dark preferably because light will turn beer skunky. That's the reason that uh, you use the dark bottles. So put it in a dark, uh, fairly, uh, fairly cool place. You know, same thing because you're basically gonna be, you know, kind of fermenting again inside these bottles. So you don't want it to be too hot and you don't want it to be real cold uh, to hurt the yeast. So you just let that bottle condition. This can take um, up to two weeks. Usually what I do is I have a couple of bottles that I use as my like sacrificial testing bottles and I'll basically taste them after a week or two two uh, goes by. Uh, I'll, t I'll try it out and see if, they, uh, if they've if they actually carbonated or not. And you can definitely tell really quick. One, it'll be either flat or it'll be fizzy. So another thing that I will note is usually in the bottom of the bottle, you'll see some sediment because uh, the yeast ferments, so the yeast dies. Um, uh, it'll basically produce sediment that'll go in the bottom. That's not a problem. It does not hurt you. In fact, the sediment is actually good for you. It's actually uh, got vitamin D in it and things like that. So the sediment is not bad. However, if you don't like seeing, you know, you know, stuff floating in it, just take it and when you pour your beer, just decant it off. You just leave a little bit in the bottom so that way you don't get that in there. But you know, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, some people say that it affects the flavor, they can taste it. I've done it both ways. I've decanted it off. I've also mixed it back up and then poured it in and I really can't tell the difference, uh, especially if you've got a really strong one like a stout or something, uh, you're, you're not gonna notice. You're not gonna taste it. But anyway, I'll go ahead and film uh, me transferring it and everything. And uh, yeah, that's basically how you put it together. Now, I just wanted to mention real fast, whenever you're transferring, okay, you're transferring from one vessel to another, you do not want it to splash everywhere. So if you saw in that last shot, I made the tube basically sit at the side of the container. That's for any time you transfer it, you want it to just gently go down because if it's splashing and everything, you're actually, you're pulling oxygen into it. At this point, oxygen is bad. You don't want oxygen in there, otherwise it will oxidize your beer and make it taste like cardboard, so you don't want oxygen in there.